right, guys, we got a weather system getting ready to move in. So we're gonna go out and try to get these uh, walls poured, these upper walls poured on that little basement project. We're gonna pour the upper ones. Get my camera stuff rounded up here. But uh, I did not get a lot of video of stacking the uh, walls again. I promise on the next job, I'll get some good video. Kind of a small little goofy job and I honestly haven't spent a whole lot of time there. I've been kind of in and out and here, there and everywhere. So, but uh, still should be a pretty cool little pour. I'll kind of go over, I'll get out there, I'll go over the uh, kind of the pre-pour checklist, I guess you'd call it. And uh, hopefully we can get this thing poured this morning for this nasty storm moves in this afternoon. So round up some camera gear here and uh, grab some breakfast on the legs, I'm hungry. We'll head out there and get this thing poured. Hopefully you guys stick along for the ride. Well, it looks like the pump truck beat me this time, but at least I beat the concrete. All right, guys, we just got here to do a quick little trip around the outside, just checking everything. Um, all the strapping. A little, little, little heavy on strapping there, but better to have too much than not enough. The, uh, it's all looking pretty good. You get a window, especially that size, that close to that corner, you need to run at least two boards all the way across and tie it to the other side. Otherwise, if your concrete's the wrong slump or something, that corner will want to try to heave out. But it helps keep that corner, corner straight there. So all this strapping down through here is not actually normal. We had a slight hump in the wall we chased out, so we kind of uh, band-aided that back together there. We got that wall perfectly straight and plumb again before we took off and went on up. Worked out really good, so looks pretty good out here. Go check out the inside. All right, guys, here's more of the inside. Just checking, making sure everything's strapped. All the commons are strapped and foamed. The doors and windows are all foamed and braced. We uh, don't have the bracing in that door yet. It's still our entryway, but as soon as we start pulling, we'll pop it in. So, looking good so far. All right, this is what it looks like from the top. We put a tree to two by six down the existing house and put some lag bolts in it. Kind of help walk all that together. See the rebar down in there. Over the windows, we did a double cord per uh, in the dura book. Problem is, you got to put your insert plate in for the cross, it hits it. So you got to think ahead and uh, knock some out. So it'll go down in there all the way. Looks pretty good. So everything's, that's the reason why we got them corded together, not separated. So we're going to put that insert plate and we'll tie them into our vertical here. Okay. Get a string line on there, make sure this thing's straight when we're done. The whole trick to these braces is when you pour the wall, you gotta make sure they're leaning in. And then once the wall's poured, you push them back out to the string line. These braces will push like push like crazy, they won't pull with a crap. So you gotta make sure that wall is laying back on them uh, before you start pulling. Alright, the other thing we do is that last truss actually sits right here on the foam. So we take and cut some half moons out where concrete will go up in there so that truss has got some concrete to sit on there and it's just not sitting on that foam.
out with six yards, as you can serve. Well, yeah. How high How high do we pour? Not very high, two courses. We're going to, we're going to redo my map. <laughs> So we got rebar in the wall, according to their respect, but we're also putting forder fiber in this concrete, which is basically strands of uh, nylon, it's like, like nylon cables. We don't use this stuff very often. We actually won a pallet of it at Las Vegas one year as well, the concrete. And that was probably six, seven years ago. We just slowly kind of been using it up on little projects here and there. Uh, it's good stuff. I just don't know if I trust it as much as I do rebar, but it don't hurt to have a little extra something something in it so it's a bag per yard this next truck's got seven yards on it so we'll throw seven bags up here. i'm not gonna lie you look just a tidbit concerned at this point to have you off you see down in there you see our little fibers how they all break apart you come in there mix with the rebar somebody's wasting money or hoping for good luck we got a penny in the wall ask your dad if you got enough concrete I did not. Ask him what happened. Uh, I, I didn't calculate it correctly. That's why you have to study hard in math. I used to be good at math. Well, I was going to say, I'm sure there's a life lesson in here somewhere. We'll have to get to that later. What do you think, Scarlett? <laughs> Oh, you're missing one. It's, it's the other side of the one you just did. Huh? That one. What are you talking about, man? It was a joke. I said you're missing one. You had that one. Oh, okay, that okay. One. <coughs> Keep my whole one going. Whoop. Keep one more. One more. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Whoop. Hold that. All right, let's check this one. That one's not too shabby. So here's a real quick wall spreading procedure. We got all these braces on the port. They're leaning in. So the whole wall is leaning in. So go down through here with a level. Get everything pretty close with the level. See how it's still leaning in just a little bit, but it's close. And once we got everything close, we go through with the tape measure and the string line and fine tune everything. You've got to have it close before you go with the string line because otherwise, if that one's way off, they're going to affect what that one does. So you got to have it close and then you can fine tune the string line. You got your measurements? Well, you got to start off at your block. What's your block? Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. What are you there? Five and a quarter. All right. So we're going to carry five and a quarter all the way down through here. And then just to make darn sure we're good, we'll probably triple check with the level. Five and a quarter. Dang, I'm good, man. Where did you put the thing at until the very end? Look at that. Oh, come on now. Oh, you shot. just you just making it up, so I gotta move it. Eight Which way? Yeah, out. Out. Where y'all want this thing? Oh. Got it? Yeah. Alright, how's it look? How's it look, Jason? Dead straight. We like to hear.
what she looked like after we got her all done. See the walls good and straight. Got all of our insert plates in there. That truss will come back and sit right in there. It'll actually get uh, what we call a tar paper diaper to kind of protect it. And then uh, we'll nail, hang, use hanger nails going right to this side of that. There's that little half moon. Got that little piece of concrete out there for that truss to sit on. Gable up and over. Oh, turned out pretty darn good. We put an extra one right here. That way uh, it's going to be back a little too far, but we can put a shim in there for that gable dress. So had a little extra time, so we put our window window well in. That turned out good. But uh, there she is. Everything went pretty good. All cleaned up, ready for lunch. Josh's luck did run out, though. We were about three quarters of a yard of concrete short. Which ain't too bad, I guess. The first two pours we were dead on. We were actually pushing our luck, so. Batch plan had a truck left over. It didn't, didn't hold us up too long. We made it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, if you could just take a few seconds to hit that thumbs up button, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on the next great adventure or the next project on Dirt Perfect, hit that subscribe button. <laughs>